Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you stop comparing and start living. I'm your host, Heather Creekmore. I hate to admit this, but I used to secretly obsess over my appearance. I thought it was part of my job as a woman to always look better, but never felt like I could be good enough. Maybe you can relate. But God, in His grace, He showed me a way out, and I want to give you all the tools you need to break free, too. If you've ever spent too much time stressing over your looks, I get it. I hope you'll keep listening and find the same freedom I have. Here are three other things you need to know about me. I'm a minivan driving mom of four elementary age kids. I'm author of the book Compared to Who and a blogger at comparedtowho.me. And you just may have seen my epic bake fail on Netflix. If you've ever struggled with comparison or body image issues, Compared to Who is the show for you. I hope you enjoy today's episode and tell a friend about it. Welcome to Compared to Who, podcast episode number three. I am so excited for you to join us today as we tackle a super important topic that is habits that keep us stuck. No one likes to be stuck, right? What if you knew that there was something you were doing every week, maybe even every day, that was keeping you trapped in your body image issues? Would you want to stop it? Would you want to know what it is so you could stop it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, let me warn you, some of these things may be kind of hard to hear. We may have to go to areas, talk about habits you have that you would rather not change. So I'm going to leave it between you and the Lord, okay? My request for you today is that you listen with an open heart and an open mind. And then you take everything you've heard and you go to the Lord and you say, hey, is this something I should change? Don't just take my word for it, okay? I have opinions galore, ask my husband, but take his word for it. Take it to him and if he says you should change it, then I suggest you listen. Okay, so that's my request for you today as we dig in to these habits. When I speak to groups of women, which I love doing, if you need a speaker, call me, because I love talking to women's groups. I have so much fun with them. Here's a little thing that I do every time I go. So if you have me come, you'll already know the answer to this, but that's okay. So I ask the group, I say, if your husband struggles with lust issues, would you buy him a subscription to Maxim magazine or Playboy magazine for Christmas? And of course, like all through the room, there's all these like little giggles and everyone kind of looks down and like, you know, shakes their head like, no, Heather, that's so stupid. That's so silly. Of course, I wouldn't do that. Why would I buy him a lustful magazine if he struggles with lust? That's ridiculous, right? And so I say, yes, of course, it's ridiculous. And I say, you wouldn't do that because of two things. And they're the two H's, okay? And so these are the H's I want you to remember. You wouldn't do it because it's not holy or healthy, okay? So holy, does God want him looking at porn? No, he doesn't, okay? So to bring that stuff into your house would be unholy. It would be against what God's best is for your lives, for his life. It would also be unhealthy, right? It would cause him to think thoughts that wouldn't be healthy for him personally or for your marriage. So you wouldn't bring pornography in your house because it would be unhealthy and unholy. Okay, ladies, here's where it gets kind of tough. If you struggle with your body image, should you be reading People magazine every week? Should you be looking at your Us Weekly? Should you be subscribing to Shape Magazine? I know you're just getting it for the exercises. I've used that line too. Should you be watching The Bachelor? Ah, sorry. I know I really got some of you there. But but seriously, friends, let's let's just stop. Everyone take a deep breath. Okay. And now let's think about these habits, these things that we do on a daily basis that keep us stuck. When you see those images of other women, let's just use Us Weekly, for example. When you see those celebrity images, what kind of thoughts do they conjure up in your mind? And I'm not talking about lust, okay? That is, that's a whole different issue. And I know a lot of women do struggle with that. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about your body image. When you see those images, those airbrushed images in a lot of cases of women 
who look really good according to culture standards, does that give you healthy thoughts? Do you think healthy things about yourself and about your life and about your purpose and about God's design for you? Or do you think unhealthy thoughts? So I do personal training with women. And one of the things that I ask women to share with me is I ask them to share honestly what those thoughts are that they hear. Because we all hear thoughts in our heads. The enemy gets in our head. He whispers all these lies. And a lot of times the lies will sound something like this. You're too fat. You're not good enough. No one will ever love you. Oh, you don't have legs or arms or abs or you name your body part. You don't have it like she does. No one will ever love you until you fix that. Or no one's ever going to want to be with you because of that ugly part of you. And sometimes these thoughts that we hear, these whispers that we hear can be really mean. And let me tell you something, friends, they're unhealthy thoughts. They are not the thoughts that God has about you. And they're not helpful to you staying in body image freedom. And they're not helpful to you living out your purpose for Jesus Christ. Okay, they keep you stuck. So when you see that image in Us Weekly, are your thoughts healthy? Are they holy? Okay, same same question, slightly different twist. Do the thoughts that you have about yourself when you see those images match up with the thoughts that God has about you? Do they match up with his word and what he says your purpose is on this earth? You see, I think what happens a lot of times is we are consuming images that are neither healthy nor holy for us, but we write it off as it's okay. You know, the kind of ironic thing is, I hate to point it out, but like if our husband was having a struggle with porn and and friends, if this is where your husband's at, let me just little aside here. There is great hope for your marriage. You can find freedom. He's not looking at that stuff because your body isn't good enough. It's not about you at all. Okay, it's about him. And I encourage you to get help. Get help for him if he's willing and ready to do that. Get help for yourself, though, most of all. You're not his Holy Spirit. You're not his conscience. You are not going to fix it for him, but you can be his cheerleader through it. And there is great hope for you on the other side of a porn issue if that's affecting your marriage. I have some great resources on my website. So go to compared to who.me and, and look up lust issues, and you'll find a couple articles I've written on the topic. Back to what I was saying before. If your husband was having a struggle with porn, you would never bring that stuff into your house, would you? You would want to keep it away from him because you know it would have a negative impact on your marriage. Well, friends, let me tell you the truth. You bringing those images in and you having unhealthy and unholy thoughts is not helping your marriage either. You are having a negative impact on your own marriage by consuming those thoughts and staying in the body image pit by consuming those images. I know it's not super fun to hear, but friends, we've got to start watching what we watch more carefully. You see, what we look at matters. In fact, it's kind of ironic. There's so many women I know who really watch what they eat really carefully. In fact, a lot of women who struggle with this issue, I was one of them for a decade, actually more than a decade. I would watch very carefully what I put in my mouth, right? I didn't want to consume things that were bad for me, but I wasn't watching very carefully what I put in front of my eyes. You see, what I've noticed is... Maybe this is different for you, but I doubt it. What I've noticed is if my husband and I decide to watch a movie and there's a scene in it that doesn't even have to be nudity. We try not to watch anything with nudity in it, but but just even a scene where it shows the bare back of a woman, like that's enough to set me spiraling into, wow, she looks really good. Wow, I don't think my back looks that good. Wow, I bet she looks really good all over. And, And watching that little bit of a scene is enough for me to start feeling bad, having unhealthy and unholy thoughts about myself to the point where I don't want to be intimate with my husband that evening, right? I'm I'm stuck thinking about, eh, I don't look good enough. And I'm not willing to be open with him because I feel like I should hide. I feel shame. <laughs> Those images bring us to that point, friends, and we do it to ourselves. There's a great verse in the Psalms, and I'll put it in the show notes, but there's a great verse. It says, turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life in your ways. You guys, we get 
get to choose what we look at. And if we choose things that rob us of our life, we should expect to feel dead, right? Turn your eyes from worthless things. Okay, now let me tackle another one here, our social media feeds. Okay, friends, so some of you guys are looking for quote-unquote motivation, right? And so you follow all these hot bodies on Instagram and you see all of their like exercise pictures or their yoga pose pictures or their totally cut sculpted like before and after pictures. Pictures. For some of you guys, those pictures are triggers. Those pictures are enough to make you worry about your body image all day long. But here's the news, the good news. You do not have to look at those pictures. You get to decide. So here's my recommendation for you today. Mute those people and follow people that post images that aren't helpful for you. Okay, you control it. You don't have to consume that stuff. And friend, if you want to stay in a place of body image freedom, you shouldn't consume that stuff. Get rid of it. Get it out of your feed. There is no need to snack on that kind of junk that will ultimately kill you. What are some other habits that keep us stuck? Well, this is where it gets a little bit trickier, and we're going to spend whole episodes um, in the next couple seasons on some of these topics. But one of them, I'm going to say, applies really only to single women, but it's the topic of sex, right? In some cases, we find ourselves as women looking to sex as a place where we can affirm our goodness physically. Friend, if you're not married, if you're not in a committed marital relationship. I'm not talking about engaged. I'm talking married. You've got a ring on it and you're having sex. Stop looking to that to solve your body image issues. Now there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If if you've messed up in this area, if you know, if you did it before you got married, whatever, hey, I'm not condemning you and neither does Jesus. Okay, there is forgiveness. We're all sinners before him. We are justified in him alone. All I'm saying to you today, friend, is if you're looking for sex to affirm your value, the value of your body, to make you feel better about your body, I, I want to ask these stuff. Wait till you get married. Wait to get married. Now, married women, if sex is where your body image issues flare up most, if your problem in sex is not feeling like you're good enough to give your body to your husband, if this is an issue for you, and and I'm going to maybe clarify a little bit in that if it's an issue for you and not for him, okay, if he hasn't said anything but affirming things to you and you're still hung up, then let me encourage you today to take that to the Father and find freedom to just take your mind off of yourself in those intimate situations. I think the number one thing you can do to bring your intimate relationship back to a place of health and wholeness is to stop thinking about yourself. Try really hard just to focus on your partner and find freedom in that way. Now, if your problem is that your husband has said things that kind of make it hard for you to feel comfortable with him in the bedroom, then that's a different issue. And I've written some stuff on my blog for that. And and that might be a little harder to dig into. Check out my blog, go to compare to who.me and, um, and look up my husband won't affirm me how to help your wife with your body image issues some of those kind of articles and see if you can find some additional help there because I don't really have time to get into that today but that is a different set of issues but if your struggle if your if your habit struggle is thinking bad thoughts about yourself and not wanting to be intimate with your husband my um, way out for you today is to just focus on him try to not think about yourself in fact I go so far as to recommend that women not look at themselves in the mirror. Now, this is kind of radical because I know oh, years ago, well, even even still today, there are some Christians out there that recommend that you find freedom by just staring at yourself naked in the mirror and saying that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay, maybe that works for some. That never would have worked for me. Still wouldn't work for me. Okay, so I'm sorry. If that works for you, awesome. You probably don't need to listen to this podcast. But for most of us, staring at ourselves naked in the mirror causes more hangups. So my encouragement to you is to get away from the mirror, cover it if you need to, spend as little time in front of that mirror as possible, because here's the truth. The truth is what that mirror says doesn't really matter. And we come back from the break, I'm going to give you a little exercise you can do to help remind you of this truth. Body image has been bogging you down for too long. It's time to get free, my friend. Go to compare to who.me, take your free body image awareness quiz, 
you will learn amazing things. You'll get your results right away. And I think you'll have fun too, because I mean, who doesn't love to take quizzes? Go to compare to who.me. There's lots of great resources on that site, articles about body image and comparison and how you can find freedom through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Check it out today, right after this episode, of course. So I promise that I give you an exercise to do to help remind you of the truth that what the mirror says doesn't matter. So here's what I want you to do if, assuming you're not driving, if you're driving, don't do this. If you're someplace where you can find a handheld mirror, I want you to go find one and I want you just to hold it in your hand. Maybe it's your compact, I don't know, maybe you have a small mirror for something else, but hold a small mirror in your hand or just pretend that you are. And what I want you to do is pretend that you're looking in that mirror. Now, a lot of people out there will tell you, you just need to look in that mirror until you find something you love about yourself and just just stare and stare and stare deep into your own eyes until you find what you love and you decide that you love your body and you love yourself and all this love, 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 love. Okay, friends, I already, if you've listened to any of my other shows or read any of my stuff, you know that I don't think that that's the way out, okay? But some people tell you that's what you do with the mirror. You use it to decide that you love yourself more. I think the mirror can do something better than that for you. I think the mirror can do something more helpful than that for you. But here's what you have to do to that mirror. Instead of pointing it at your head, instead of pointing it at your face, instead of pointing it anywhere at your body where you're reflecting yourself, I want you to tilt that mirror up towards the sky. Take the mirror off of your own reflection. Because really, what are you here on earth for? If you are a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, you are here on this earth to reflect God, right? We're made in his image. We are here to reflect him. My purpose on this earth is not to look as hot as possible so people will want to worship me, so people will see my glory. My purpose on this earth is not to make myself happy with my reflection, to keep working and striving in order to make the mirror look the way I want when I look into it. No, my purpose on this earth is to just reflect him and reflect his glory. And what is so awesome about this, my friends, is that when the mirror is no longer pointed at me, I am free. I can have a honking huge zit right in that place. Uh, you guys have probably had him here too. I used to get him there all the time. That place right between your eyebrows where, you know, you feel like you got the big dot right there. Oh my word, getting a zit there is the worst. But you can get that big zit there or anywhere. <laughs> you you can have pink eye. I've had that. You can, you can have whatever face to forming thing you've got going on. You can have your worst hair day ever. And when you point that mirror up, guess what, friends? You are free. You are free to only reflect him. What the mirror says about you doesn't matter. And so circling back around, if you're a married woman, circling back around your sex life, what the mirror says about you doesn't matter. You were created to have a perfect union with your husband, one that mimics Jesus' relationship with us. Do not let what that mirror says about you get in the way of that perfect union. Stand before your husband without shame, just like you can stand before Jesus without shame, and, and enjoy your marriage. Don't let your body image stop you from that. As we get ready to wrap up today, I want to just take one reader question that I got that's on the topic of habits that keep us stuck. Here goes. Dear Heather, I really can't imagine my life without my shows. They're the way I unwind after work. I have a very stressful job and I need them in my life to help me relax when I get home. How can I fix my body image and hang on to the shows I love too? Well, I might not have good news for this one, (laughs) but it's a really good question and it's one I hear all the time. Hey, you're talking about the way I relax. Hey, that's my unwind time. That's my show. Like, I get it. I do. I really do get it. I like certain shows too, but I think you just need to be honest with yourself and honest before Jesus and ask yourself, does watching this cause, we're going to go back to those two H's, unhealthy or unholy thoughts for me? And if it does, then friend, let me encourage you that you will never regret giving it up. Never. Sometimes it might just be Facebook as your way to unwind, right? And so what I've done in the past is I've recommended that people take Facebook or Instagram off of their phone 
and where the icon was on your home screen, replace it with the Bible app. And so every time you want your thumb to like go to Facebook and start scrolling and you kind of fall into that Facebook pit, instead of doing that, you just read the verse of the day or, you know, read whatever plan you're following on the Bible app. Just go read a scripture instead of doing that. How do you unwind without your shows? Friends, it's possible. It is possible. And in fact, so my kids love to play video games. And, you know, we all have different addictions that we struggle with. But I've been really researching this video game addiction thing a lot because it's a real thing, you guys. And those of you who have teenagers, you know, you you know that video game addiction just kind of seeps right in quickly and sneakily. And it's very real. And one of the ways that you know you have an addiction is if you don't want to give something up or if you do it in secret. And so, friend, if you don't want to give up your show, I'm just wondering if it's become an addiction for you, and maybe it would be healthy to give it up, not just for your body image issue reasons, but maybe also for addiction reasons as well. You can find something else. There's all kinds of wholesome entertainment out there that might not cause you the same struggle. I love vintage television. It's okay, maybe I'm, I'm an old soul or something, but give me some I Love Lucy or some Mary Tyler Moore show or um, Little House in the Prairie even. I love vintage shows like that. And they don't seem to cause me the same amount of struggle as some of the newer things that are out on Netflix and such. So let me just encourage you to just take it, take it before the father. I know it's hard to give up your bachelor. I get it, but you will be okay without it. I promise you will. Do you have questions that you'd like me to tackle on this podcast? I hope that you'll send them to me. You can follow me on Instagram compared to who I promise not to post any pictures of myself um, that would make you compare at all because you aren't going to see me in a bathing suit on there for sure. You can follow me on Facebook at compared to who and you can also follow my blog compared to who.me and you can send me your questions on any of those places because I would love to hear them and tackle them on this podcast. The next episode, episode four, we're going to talk more about some habits that keep us stuck. We're going to talk about dieting and exercising and over-exercising and what amount of dieting is okay and what amount of exercising is okay and is any of it okay and how do we navigate all of that and still find body image freedom. That's what we're going to talk about in our next episode and I hope you'll join me. 